Hello and welcome to Guns and Gear. Well, you know, I was going to make a video um, talking about the guns that my wife and I were going to take on the uh, camping trip. But as uh, events turned out, I ended up not being able to make that video before we went on the trip. But, you know, talking about camping and talking about camping guns and the perfect packing pistol and things of that nature is a, is a conversation I enjoy. And so I thought I would go ahead and, and put some guns on the table here and, and make a video anyway. Okay. Now, as you can tell, uh, I had made a decision that I was going to carry a revolver with me on my camping trip because that's all I put on the table. But that's not, you know, uh, completely defined as a uh, perfect pack packing pistol or as a uh, camp gun. Okay. Uh, there are plenty of semi-automatics out there that will serve that role. Uh, it, a lot of it is going to have to do with uh, where you're going and uh, what you're likely to run into. You know, uh, I've always uh, pretty much stayed close to the uh, definition of a perfect packing pistol. It has to be a, a gun that you don't mind packing around with you all day long. That has the adequate power to defend you against uh, any any kind of critter you may come across, and uh, you know, fun to shoot. Okay, so with those parameters, uh, these are some of the handguns that I've placed out on the table. Now, I really don't want this to be a long video, but I don't remember which of these guns actually that I've had on the table before, and if so, has, has it been a long while? Uh, I'm not really certain of that. Uh, I do own a lot of revolvers, and a lot of those revolvers are repeats. Uh, for instance, here's a K-Frame 357 Magnum. I've probably got six, seven, eight uh, K-Frame 357 Magnums. Now, some of them are like this one, which is a Model 66, and it's stainless, so that means it's stainless steel. Some of them have two and a half inch barrels. Some of them have three inch barrels. Some of them have four inch barrels. Uh, and I also had the blue version, the, the Model 19. I have a fixed blade, a fixed sighted version. This is the Model 65, you know. I have uh, you know, several repeat guns, and so I really don't know what I placed on the table or, or not. So forget all that. Let's, let's talk guns. This first gun up right here is a uh, Ruger Blackhawk. It's in 357 Magnum. It's a single action gun, and it is their 50th anniversary gun. I don't know if this is going to come into frame or not. I have hit or miss luck with that, it seems. But at any rate, um, they came out this as a 50th anniversary gun. I know some people collect this gun, but I'll tell you what, it really shoots great. I, I'm glad that it's not a safe queen for me. I enjoy it. And as I mentioned earlier, this is a uh, Model 66. It's a uh, K-Frame 357 Magnum, and this gun has a 3-inch barrel. Very fond of 3-inch barrel guns, uh, particularly in the role of a perfect packing pistol and also in the role of defense. You know, for many, many years, um, a K-frame 357 Magnum with a three inch barrel was considered an, an excellent choice as a fighting handgun. All right, and this is another uh, Model 66. It's also a K-frame, it's also a 357 Magnum. It just has a two and a half inch barrel. This is a handy little gun, you know, and I've carried this gun uh, quite a few times, hanging it, bumming around in the woods. Now this gun right here is a Ruger SP-101. This is, also has a 3-inch barrel. It's a 357 Magnum, but it is a 5-shot gun, and it happens to be my wife's uh, favorite camping gun, okay? And uh, this does have fixed sights, but she really likes this gun and therefore this is what she chooses most of the time. Now over here is kind of a big gun, kind of big for the definition. This is a, uh, a Model 629, it's a 44 Magnum, it has a 5 inch barrel and it says 629 Classic. I don't know if that's going to show up or not, but anyway, that's not exactly true. Okay, when I originally bought this handgun it had an 8 and 3 8 inch barrel, but uh, I have sensed uh, had bought a couple of other 8 and 3 
eight inch uh, 44 magnums. And I took this one. I have a buddy of mine that has a gun shop, and he happened to have this barrel, so we basically just swapped out, and he put the barrel on for me. And really, I've never looked back. I've really enjoyed this gun. Here is another 44 Magnum, and it's a, the Model 29. It's a blued version, and this is a custom gun. And I'll tell you what, boy, just a smooth glass, smooth trigger. Man, it's just a pleasure. And it also has a 3-inch barrel. You'll notice that I have a lot of 3-inch barrel guns on the table because I, I really like them. I enjoy them. And, uh, you know, so that's what I buy. Here is my one and only Taurus. This is the Taurus 441. It's a 44 Special. It's a medium frame. Uh, pretty comparable to an L-frame Smith, like you would see with the uh, 686. And this is in 44 Special, and it also has a 3-inch barrel. And uh, I know a lot of people like Taurus revolvers. Uh, I've owned a handful of them over the years, and uh, it's, I've had found their quality to be hit or miss. As a matter of fact, I had some issues with the timing of this gun when I first bought it, but once I got that fixed, you know, this has been a, a dandy little gun for me. I've really enjoyed it. By the way, because it's a medium frame gun and 44 Special, it's a five shot. Just like this little 396 Smith & Wesson, this is their Night Guard series, and it has a two and a half inch barrel and has a tritium uh, front sight, and it's a five shot also. It is an L frame. And, uh, you know, this is just a lightweight, handy little gun. I really, I really enjoy this little gun. It doesn't have the original Packmeyers on there. Uh, I, I, I had a pair of these uh, Hogue monogrips on there. I thought I'd put them on there for a while, see how I liked it. Uh, the main difference for me is I think on revolver grips, the Hogues are a little bit thinner. And uh, I kind of like the Packmeyer, like the Packmeyer decelerator or Packmeyer presentation grips just a little bit better because they're just a little bit thicker. Okay. Now, reaching across the table here. Here is a, an N-frame Smith. This is the uh, Mountain Gun series, which means it has a narrow, a very tapered uh, barrel, 4-inch, and it's in 41 Magnum. And if some of y'all have watched some of my other videos, uh, this is my favorite revolver cartridge just for this purpose right here, for the camp gun, the perfect packing pistol type of philosophy. I really enjoy a 41 Magnum. Now here is another 44, uh, 41 Magnum. This here is a Model 657. Uh, my first Smith & Wesson uh, 41 Magnum. Uh, it's stainless steel. It's six shot. It has, again, a three inch barrel. And I bought this gun back in the, in the 80s. I want to say 86. I think it was introduced in 86 and it might have been just after that that I uh, bought one. But anyway, I've had this gun for a long time. This gun normally wears Pacmar presentation grips on it. But uh, these were the original grips. I put them on a little while back and I've just kind of left them on there. I kind of like them. Now these next two guns uh, can be kind of controversial whether or not people think that they're good for as a perfect packing pistol. Now this is another end frame gun, and you'll see this little short cylinder on here. This is in 45 ACP, and some people don't believe that it may not have the power uh, to fit that definition of that perfect packing pistol or some something of that nature, but you know what? I think a lot of that has to do with uh, where you live and where you're going and what kind of critters that you could run into, whether they be four or two-legged. And uh, this is a six shot. It, it operates from these full moon clips, or if you have some of the old uh, half moon clips, they work fine also. But anyway, this is a performance center gun, and it's just a joy to shoot, and I've carried this on many a camping trip. Did not feel undergunned. Just like this other little, this little pea shooter here. Now this is always raises the eyebrows of people when we talk talking about a perfect packing pistol, but can it be a 22? Sure it can. Sure it can, uh, especially if this is not going to be your main gun, you know. Uh, would I carry this gun into Alaska? 
Ah, sure I can. As long as I have a nice 375 Holland and Holland uh, or a big old 4570 uh, lever gun or something of that nature. Something uh, powerful enough to protect myself. Now I know there, I, I can already hear the uh, collective sigh and the head swell up on all the people that love the 22 long rifle. Uh, I don't care. Get over it. This is a dandy little gun. It's a Smith & Wesson uh, 317. I just had somebody call me and we were talking and he saw a YouTube video from a rather big channel that was really just destroying this gun and he really couldn't understand it because he shot this gun with me many times and didn't really seem to have the issues that this other channel had. And I'm not real sure. I know the channel that he's talking about. Uh, I just haven't been subscribed to him for a very, very long time now. I haven't seen the video. But uh, that's another little three inch gun. It's built off of the J frame. It's an eight shot 22 long rifle. And hey, that's a fun planking gun, man. And it takes up no weight in a pack. It takes up no space in a vehicle if you're car camping. And uh, if you're going somewhere where you can do some shooting, uh, why not carry a nice old 22? Nothing wrong with that. This is the very definition of a kit gun, you know? Nice and lightweight, you can throw it in a tackle box or your backpack, whatever. Cool gun. All right, folks, well, that's my video. Turned out to be a little bit longer than I was hoping for, but I apologize. Uh, if some of these guns you haven't seen before and I didn't go into enough detail, I, I think I am going to start making uh, videos just talking about one gun and uh, showing that gun to you so I can keep a little bit better track on what I have shown and what I haven't. All right, folks. Well, I, I thank you so much for watching my videos. I do appreciate it. And remember to shoot straight on the range and in life. Thanks.